here with a slightly different video. Um, I thought I'd do a collection video. Um, standing in front of the collection I'm going to go through, um, ignore the Famicom just here, but all of the section behind me up to uh, the top of this shelf here yeah, is my MSX collection. So it's a collection of over 300 titles for the MSX1 and I've got about 80 titles for the MSX2 as my cat comes in and says hello um, and um, uh, one title for the MSX2 uh, Plus uh, although one title can count as both um, and I thought I'd go through it so um, I'm not going to be able to take them all off the shelf and bring them forward um, it's probably better if I move the camera closer to the shelf and we go through it alright let's go do that now um, now this may aggravate some people, the games are not in any particular order, I sort of have them grouped sort of by manufacturer, but that's not always consistent. I probably actually need to pretty much take the lot off the shelves and reorganise them, but some others ever. So these are my uh, titles from ASCII in these particular cases. Uh, we have uh, the Black Onyx, and most of my, you know, a fair percentage of my collection is boxed. Uh, MSX 21, which is pretty much a blackjack game. Sorry, these are plastic and they're sticking together. Um, I've got a bit of reflection. Um, Lodgus, I think that's called. It's a 3D maze game. Uh, Crazy Bullet. This reflection is going to, which is a tank game. Turboat which actually came out for the original Spectre video as well uh, or came out for the original Spectre video first for MSX uh, Marine Battle fairly simple game, I've written a game that's very similar to this in basic, this one's not that complicated now this is a really good game, it's called Castle Excellent uh, and it is indeed excellent, the music can get a little bit annoying but it's a very good um, you know, puzzle platformer type game with lots and lots of screens, uh, very good detail in the graphics, all for MSX1. Then we have a oh, Japanese game. We have the very first dungeon, or oh, sorry, Dragon Quest game. That's for the MSX1. Um, we do have some screenshots on the back of that one. So fairly simple graphics, a bit of kanji, sort of playable. Then we have, I do that every time, aren't I? Dragon Quest 2, which is actually for the MSX2. Uh, slightly more detailed graphics. Uh, still uses a bit of candy though. Uh, then we have another one of the RPGs, which is so that sort of thing there. Beautiful cover. I mean, look, I just mainly love collecting the RPGs for their covers. I used to love playing them. So this is for MSX2 and MSX2+. Plus. I didn't realise that. Um, three and a half inch disc game. And has some quite good graphics. Haven't actually played this one. It's probably one I should um, download. It, 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 does, it is reasonably playable too, so it's not too much kanji. But I'm, I, think, I believe there is a translation patch for that one. Get that carefully. That's our first shelf. Right, next. Um, so I've sort of got stuff together that fits on the shelves in a lot of cases. So from um, Akko Soft we have Star Buggy, which is quite a good uh, Moon Patrol copy. Astro Blaster, which is a bit of a, a shoot 'em up in the uh, Phoenix type style. We have, I'll just put that down there for a sec, we have the wonderful Alien 8. Cassette version, Way of the Tiger, it is a Spectrum conversion but it's not a bad game. Venom Strikes Back, another Spectrum conversion. Uh, Shogi, which is a Mahjong game. Um, Come on Becky, which is a, a cutesy platformer. And then we have another generic Mahjong game. Uh, we have Actual Moon Patrol by IRM for the MSX, a very good version, very hard, not the same as the Atari Soft uh, Moon Patrol for the ColecoVision. Uh, Exerion by Jalco, very good version, um, pretty much the version on the SG-1000 is, is pretty much the same. Um, next, I think this is elevator action, yes, 
Uh, elevator action, not a bad version. Quite enjoy that game. Uh, and by the way, uh, feel free to mention down in the comments any you would like me to do a gameplay of, because I uh, am quite into replaying my MSX games at the moment. We have Frontline by Tato. Just be careful, this cassette tape's up the top here. Then we have uh, Chack and Pop by Tato. Not a too bad game. Also on the SP1000. Uh, MSX Baseball. Put over here. Right, we have some more ASCII titles now. Put those that way. We have Anti. Mr. Chin, which is a really cool game. <coughs> Balancing plates. Dragon Attack by Hal. Um, a simplistic shooter, but it's interesting. Very like Sliver. I think that's probably the best one. Um, ooh. I'm going to struggle to remember what that one's called. Bit of a strategy game. I don't think I've actually ever been able to figure that one out. Uh, so interesting point. My games, if they had have been published by ASCII Corporation, and I have a letter asking uh, for my copies of my games, would have been appeared in either this packaging or this packaging up here. Um, I a oh, old Mac Farmer. This is from Mass Tail. This game came out for the original Spectre video as well. Um, oh, cool. Anyways, it's pairs matching games called pairs. There you go. Now, a really cool game here. We better get these down so we can have a look at the um, the covers properly. Okay, so we have this one. Um, a strategy game. I can't remember the name. Sorry. Oh. I actually have two copies of Mr. Chin. I did not realise that. Very good game. Um, open for trade. Put that over there. And I seem to have two copies of that one. Of Pears. How has this happened? Anyway, uh, oh, this is a really good pinball game. Uh, scrolls up and down from Hal. Powerball, it's called. Actually, not a bad game at all. And this game. Egoland Mystery, which is the first Egoland game. This is a really, really good game. A um, hundred screens uh, to work through and work and basically puzzle your way through. Uh, really should do a gameplay of that one. So that's a really good game. One of my favourites. Right, let's put those back. So there is going to be a bit of a shuffling. There is just because there is lots of titles. Okay, now I've managed to fit some um, UK cassette titles here. So we have Lothar and Special Operations, um, Bugaboo the Flea, uh, Gilbert Escape from Drill, Blasteroids, a lot of these are just straight spectrum conversions, uh, Feud, Invasion, uh, the pools predictor, <laughs> not very useful. Uh, uh, down here, Ocean Conqueror. That's not a too bad game, actually. A strategy um, type game. All right, I'll get this in order, and we'll go down to the next shelf. Right back. So this shelf, pretty much a Casio shelf. There's a lone Acosoft title there, Scramble. Um, very hard to get that game to run on a system, actually. Uh, I'll have to have another go. Then we have uh, my only one in this format. So this is Championship Soccer. This is identical to the Champion Soccer that's on the SG-1000. But this is my only boxed example of that line of games in this size. So it's the larger box. It's in very good condition. It's actually not a bad soccer game. Um, I suppose this box is the same size as well. 
So this is a Gameland Special. This is a very uncommon title. Um, so it's got multiple games and things like that in the one pack. It's quite a heavy pack and comes up with a menu and things. Uh, they're very, all very fairly basic stuff though. Deal with the stuff that's sitting on the front of the shelf. So this is just an empty shell. There's no circuit board in here of Basic 2 Ma Programming Master. No circuit board, I'm afraid. Right, and we have number 20, Exoid Z. Not a bad little uh, robot shooter game. Right, starting for one. So the Casio games were quite a surprise. Never saw them back in the day, but I've collected a few of them, and they're actually not too bad games. So Exciting Jockey is just, it's, it's a horse racing game. Probably the simplest one. Um, and then you have Exciting Baseball. There are lots of MSX baseball games. Not a too bad baseball game. Uh, number three is Ski Command. A surprisingly good game. Quite good fun. Let's just skip some numbers here. Uh, Someone got around the wrong way. So, Ice World. Um, quite a surprise when I got this one. Hadn't heard of it before. Um, another, um, you know, single screen uh, puzzle type game. Uh, we've got to go around and um, collect various things and dodge the enemies. A uh, little bit Pingo inspired. That's why I had to turn around the other way because that edge is. Um, that is good. So, our next one is Eagle Fighter. They have quite nice covers too. Let's get another couple of numbers. We have. Um, oh, which ninja title? But it is quite a good uh, ninja game. It's one of the earliest in the series. Uh, you can see the character there. Ninja Kun or something like that. Uh, it's quite hard. Then 18. This is Car Fighter. I just thought this was a because Casio did actually release some re-release some Konami titles. This is not the same as Road Fighter, which we'll get to in a bit. It's actually a slightly more interesting game than Road Fighter, um, and it's uh, it's it's quite good. I actually got the um, somebody's ported that to ColecoVision. Which is my friend Klaus that did the port. And then we have um, Casio Art Studio. This is a slightly more uncommon title. They should have drawn and everything like that. I have no idea whether it supports the MSX mouse, so I haven't tried it. I probably should. Also have an MSX trackball, so that one's unnumbered. Same as this one is unnumbered. So 501S, 503, so there must be a series of um, utility educational. Now, it's the later games come in these small boxes. I do have some more loose cartridges. We'll get them to them later. So number 23... Um, very nice cover on this one, and quite an interesting game. I'm just struggling to remember the name. Bit of a, you know, monster house sort of exploration type game. This has a great big giant long gut name, but it's got the word Kitty in it. Kitty who goes on adventures and it's actually a really colorful little game very well uh, written quite up to the um, right up to the quality of some of the Konami titles um, and actually um, even though it's got a really weird long name quite a good fun game uh, and this game is absolutely excellent um, it looks a little bit like Zelda in um, its graphics and how it looks, but you're actually working your way up a tower, so you don't go around a maze, you're working your way up the tower, front. you've got to try and get all the way to the top, and it really is a fun game. It's also been ported uh, to the uh, Coleco Vision, where I could probably get its name from. Oh, the Coleco Collection's right next to me. Um, I can't see it for the trees at the moment, but anyway, it's a really, really um, maze of something game, I think. 
take my memory pills and this is just a random handheld. So we'll put that back, put that back. Now go into the next shelf which is sort of um, a, a bit of a Sony shelf. Um, so some of these Sony titles are actually Coleco titles. Sorry, Coleco. Konami titles. Uh, first we have New Horizon. So it's an English course. So um, it's uh, cassette tapes. Basically teaching people English. This would That would be quite an uncommon title. Then you have some of the Sony large box titles. There's Sony small box titles, uh, which are in another spot. So we have Computer Othello. Quite a good version of Othello. I wrote a very good version of Othello for the MSX as well. And then we have Sparky. Another single screen arcade type game. Quite good fun. Haven't had that one for as long as some of the others. Uh, now the next one is Juno First. I was extremely excited to get this game when I um, when I found a copy. Um, I was just incredibly disappointed when I played it. It's not one of my favourite MSX ports. It's It could have been done much better. It just does not play the same as the arcade game. And when you look at something like Beam Rider, you can see the machine's perfectly capable of... of um, of doing better. So a little bit of disappointment in the title. It's an okay game, but um, yeah, I wouldn't go out of the way and pay too much for it. Uh, creative Graphics. A sealed game. How about that? It's a, it's a doodle program. And I'm probably not going to unseal it. Uh, Alibaba and the 40 Thieves. I really do love these covers. They do, did a good job. Um, I don't ever remember seeing these large covers here in Australia though. So another um, you know, single screen at a time game, um, you know, running around mazes, avoiding things and collecting things. Quite good. Uh, Sony also released a thing called a data cartridge. It's a 4K permanent RAM cartridge. So it has uh, like flash RAM or a battery in there. Um, so you can actually um, save stuff to the cartridge. That would have been quite an it's got index cards. I actually think I have a loose one of these as well, this box one. Alright, some more um, UK titles. So from Kuma we have Eric and the Floaters, Hypervita and Cribbage. They're all pretty much the same as the Spectrum equivalents. We have Pinball Game from Toshiba. Uh, no screenshots to show you, but was written specifically for the MSX. Same as Polar Star. Not a too bad game. Uh, checkmate, first moves in chess. Um, it is that's written in basic, and then teach yourself basic. So these are like a, an introductory set of tapes that came with Toshiba machines, I believe. Now we have, um, I think this is is this a Triton or a Super Triton? There's two games. This is the first one, I reckon. So this is MSX. Lovely cover. Sorry for the reflection. Not a bad little adventure action platformer. So perfectly playable. Um, the kanji doesn't get in the way, in other words. I'm trying, sorry, it's very shiny. It's quite bright in here. I'm getting a lot of reflection. I do apologise. Uh, Chima Chima. Quite a quite both tick, quite interesting characters. Um, haven't had this game for that long. That's another, um, you know, run around mazes, collect things, avoid the enemies type of game. Lots of those on the MSX. Interesting. Says MSX slash two. Maybe it just means it works on MSX uh, being enhanced. Right, next we have. Um, sorry, I'm I'm reaching for the. Um, does it help if I put them down there like that? Yes, it does. Okay. Um, it has obviously a quite a controversial cover for the time. There's a version on the Master System as well. And. 
because it's about reflection and unfortunately my covers bubbled a bit. It's an RPG. It does have a bit of kanji in it, as you can see. Uh, inside, it has a manual. It has a beautiful um, cloth map. And has a little metal action figure and the cartridge itself. Um, so very much for a person who likes collecting RPGs and with all of the extra bits, a uh, very, very nice title. Uh, I actually have another copy of this without the metal figure. And I had the opportunity to buy this, this one along with another lot of games, so I chose to upgrade at the time. Right, next. Uh, so Xanadu, available on quite a few other systems as well. So it's Dragon Slayer 2. MSX and MSX2. I'm not sure whether it actually runs better when you put it in MSX2 whether or whether they're just saying it's compatible. Quite a heavy thing. You're going to have to put up with me. I'm going to open most of the RPGs because they're in, you know, they always come with such nice stuff inside. There's a Falcom catalogue too. I could probably do a video just on the RPGs. Right, next we have a whole lot of uh, cassette titles. So I better position myself. I better go through these quick. Most of these are going to be um, straight uh, spectrum ports, but not all of them are. Uh, we have Indiana, Indiana Jones. Outrun for MSX1, which is atrocious. Uh, Mutant Zone. Batman, which is actually quite a good game. Uh, Bug Bite release of Pac-Man, which is actually the Nemco release of Pac-Man on tape instead of cartridge. Same with Dig Dug. These are they're actually quite good games. Uh, Maxima. Computer Hits, which has Brian Jack, Superstar, Disc Warrior, Hustler, Chuckle Egg, Les Flicks, Special Operations on it. We have Humphrey, Crazy Golf, Danger Mouse, Sea King. I did get a lot of these in a bulk lot and I haven't actually played some of them. Vampire, Alpha Blaster, Grid Trap. Another Acosoft title, Centipede, which has speech in it. Oh No, which is a Pac-Man game, and there is another version of this early that is actually called Oh Shit, and says so. Then you have Boo, which is a Missile Command clone. Uh, Hopper, which is a Frogger clone. We have Scrabble. We have 180, Raster Scan, Milk Race, Storm, Angle Ball, Amarote, which is quite a good game, Master Chess, Flash Gordon, Terminus, Void Runner, I like that one, Las Vegas Video, Soul of a Robot, Jet Set Willy, Jet Set Willy 2, and Manic Miner, Superstar Challenge, Chucky Egg, Ninja, Finders Keepers, Molecule Man, Octagon Squad, Spacewalk, Submarine Shooter, Snake It, Zen Editor Assembler, which is actually one of the assemblers I used um, once I'd tired out Magic of Spectre video and before I switched over to this. Uh, Night Time. Uh, one of my favourite games, Sweet Acorn. Uh, Zilog is actually quite a good game. Norseman, lesser so. I'm not sure what that one is. I think it's, oh, sea Hunter by Spectre video. It's just a basic title. We have Ole, Chicken Chase, Bordello, Ace of Aces, Chiller, which is actually one of my original games from back in the day. Punch and Judy, uh, re, re, looks like refuel, but it's not quite. And fire escape. All right, I'll tidy up and we'll go to the next shelf. Down the bottom of the shelf, we have um, M D M T Debug, which is actually sent from my good friend Mark Vergier in the Netherlands. I haven't actually used that though. Uh, we have Nico, quite a nice cover. Um, just trying to think. It's a bit of a it's a brick breaking type game like Arkham. Uh, 
another Echo Sub Hider title highly down here, Jet Fighter. The MSX port of Xenon. It is a Spectrum, uh, a Spectrum port, which is disappointing. It could have been better if it wasn't, but it still actually plays quite well. So it looks like this on the MSX. Um, they could have made the main ship and some of the enemy sprites, and it would have, um, you know, made it look better. But it still actually plays quite well. I enjoy it. Uh, Bank Street Writer, which is that's actually an almost sealed copy of Bank Street Writer. I have a loose copy as well. That's our word processor. Uh, that's an empty box. Then we have uh, the Electric Studio Graphic Designer. That's mine from all the way back in the day. Left old stock from the shop I used to work in. So basically when they just tossed away all their old stock at the end. Uh, Caverns of the Death. Uh, a French title, I think. Ah, now this is really cool. This is a copy of Arcanoid 2 for the MSX2 and it has the spinner controller. Um, I am going to record a specific gameplay of that on my MSX2+, Plus, so we'll get it at 60 hertz. Um, I'll be doing that shortly. Uh, so, Sunrise Compact Flash Card Interface. So it allows you to use a compact flash card and some tools. Alright, while we're on the floor, we might as well work our way up. So down the bottom here I have all of the RPGs I can fit here and strategy games, um, uh, other than the ones that have leaked out. So this one here is a pure war strategy game. Really nice cover. Got it for hardly anything because it's virtually unplayable if you're into that sort of thing. Okay, let's go through these. To sparking things. Right. We have Crimson 2, which is for MSX2 and MSX2 Plus. Go to the back. Um, quite a very, very good graphics. Um, does have a bit of kanji in it, though, which makes it a little hard to play. As you can see, even the stats screen has kanji on it. There are a lot of translation hacks available, though, so. And it has a lovely cloth map in it. There we go. And quite a nice hard case. But I can now I'll get the shot. And I'll leave that out for a minute. Then we have Crimson 3 with an even better cover. That is just gorgeous. And these RPGs, because a lot of them are a little bit unplayable, I've managed to get in quite good condition. Um, so MSX2 and MSX2 Plus, really good detailed graphics. Uh, looks even better than the first one. Um, playing a translated version of this would be quite good fun. Um, I if I open every one, we're going to be here for ages. It comes with a nice disc container. That lovely art on the menu again. No cloth mats with this one though. easier. Next we have XZR2, which is another RPG. MSX2 and MSX2 Plus support. Um, really nice colourful uh, graphics. That will st we will stop getting them out of their boxes or we'll be here forever. Um, next we have Dragon Slayer 4. Now there are obviously more in uh, um, in, yeah, in the Dragon Slayer series that I don't have, so I don't have every game. It is a particular series, um, and these ones are more you've got into the screen and side scrolling type platform action, so it is perfectly playable. Now, next we have we have Highlight 1. Not the best game. <laughs> um, 
yes, it's interesting. It is perfectly playable, but uh, it can get quite tiresome. Uh, then they decided to bring out Hydelite 2. They do have nice cover art and things, still for the original MSX. Well, they have some interesting graphics, and not bad for the MSX one. But, um, yes, probably not the most enjoyable games. And then they brought out an MSX 2 um, title, Hydelite 3. Put those other two back. So this supports MSX2 cartridge. Uh, the graphics do get more detailed. Um, mostly playable. You get a bit of kanji text with this one. Hang on, get the next title out. Um, so this is Askine Story 3. So it's actually sort of a sequel to the other game I had out with the metal figure. Um, quite a nice cover. Very, very nice graphics. Um, does have kanji in the text and stuff like that though. So it's one I haven't played yet, but really should get around to playing it with a translation pack. Who has time to play RPGs? Even though we might like love them. So we have uh, Romancia. Beautiful, beautiful cover. And for the MSX2 from Falcom. Um, a lot of platforming, side scrolling, and uh, talking to people. A uh, little bit of kanji text in it. Probably you could nut your way through that one. Next, we have Sci Blade. Sci Blade. Um, there is actually quite a lot in this box. Um, I haven't had this one very long, so maybe search back in my um, in my videos for a, have a, a bit better look at what's inside this box. But it's sort of like a graphic novel type, adventure type thing. Um, once again, would be probably needs a, um, a translation patch to play properly. But beautiful title, really well presented. There's heaps of stuff in here. Uh, next, we have this great big giant box game which is uh, another graphic novel type one, not murder mystery, maybe. Then we have a Gundam game, I like Gundam games, for the MSX2, uh, but it is a Gundam strategy game, unfortunately, so uh, not a Gundam action game. Uh, Alright, we have some nice uh, Japanese weirdness type game. Uh, it's gambling. I'm not sure what this is, but never been able to play it, never understood what in the hell's going on. But hey, great cover up. Right, uh, we have. There are 50 games on this. So for MSX, MSX2, and MSX2 Plus. Uh, so joyful program library. So a lot of uh, a lot of games written in basic, but not all of them are. So lots and lots of little games. Right. Put them on away. Next we have beautiful cover. So Runeworth MSX2 and MSX2 Plus, three and a half inch discs. Some really really good looking graphics. Very well done. Um, the box weighs a ton too. Heaps of stuff in there. Um, felt covered book with um, art and everything in it. Once again, worthy of a video unto itself just to look at RPGs and the just the wonderful stuff that comes with them. Right. Almost finished the shelf. We next we have the the first Dragon Slayer game, MSX2 and MSX2 Plus. So I do have a couple of them. Um, really, really nice, well done graphics. Um, sort of playable. As you can see, a bit of kanji there. You can nut your way through if you know a bit. I do believe there's a translation patch for that one. And this game over here is another war strategy game. 
quite common to find copies of this. Um, no way in hell am I going to be able to work how to play that one. There for completeness. And there's several in, they're like Genghis Khan, I think the game is named. And there are several in the series. I'm not going to be able to get that back in for the moment. Um, Alright, I'll get in a better position and we'll move up to the next shelf. Right, next shelf. Now there's a lot on this shelf. Well, we'll start here. These ones are very important because they're written by me. These are original copies of my original games, my machine code titles. You've got Pixidus, my vertical Challenge Shooter, my, the first machine code games I released, which is Media Swarm and Birds of Orion, so an Asteroids game and a bit Phoenix-like game on side B, and Munch Mania, which was my Pac-Man clone. Of course, very proud of those. All right, we'll go for the drawers first. So these are my loose cartridges. Um, three more Genghis Khan strategy games. <laughs> um, Davia from TE Soft. Uh, it's a like it's a war simulator game. Um, it actually you can use this with uh, one of the highlights to uh, get some enhancements, I believe, if you plug both cartridges in. Uh, we have Night Law. So yes, it's the Spectrum Night Law ported to the MSX, and, but released on a cartridge. This format is actually really, really rare. So this cartridge is worth a lot of money. Uh, Flappy. I do believe I've got a copy of Flappy Boxed. But this is this is a different um, label. So this is Flappy Limited, and then there's Flappy Normal. I'm not sure if my box one's Flappy Limited. I seem to have released this game three times. Uh, another HAL game. Um, I didn't know what this one is. It's not... I'd have to double check the innards. This could possibly be a repeat of some of those HAL box ones that I have. Uh, Battleship Clapton 2 from Toshiba. Uh, probably should be called Battleship Crapton 2. It's terrible. Um, uh, this is a game that I played back in the day, although we, I'm sure we had the tape version. Um, it's a sort of an into the screen 3D shooting game. It's not very good, can't remember the exact name of it. Um, Valus. That's, this is the original Valus game. So it's the very first game in the Valus series, came out for the MSX before any other system. Um, not a bad little platform. Yeah, see the Phantom, Valus the Phantom Soldier. Not a bad look, so you, um, she's got a sword, so you, you jump and she slashes things with her sword. Um, not a too bad game, the first one. Then we have Hang On by Sega, and it's not Hang On 2, like the SG-1000, uh, which tends to suggest that maybe... Although this seems to play almost identically, so maybe they just missed the two off the label. Uh, no date. Released by Pontia. Then we have um, the Activision games that were released on cartridge in Japan. So we have River Raid, Pitfall, Pitfall 2, and I do have some more, uh, but I've I've got one more box one. So. Right. Uh, so now we go into my um, Konami games that I don't have in a box. So we have this uh, special cartridge from Konami that you plug in with other Konami cartridges and allows you to unplug other features. Um, supports quite a few different games. Then we have Antarctic Adventures, one of the very first games I played for the MSX and still enjoyable to this game. It is a pity I don't have a full complete box copy. Uh, mentioned before, this is Road Fighter, another game that I did play back early in the day. Never had my own copy. Um, quite a good game, not quite as interesting as Car Fighter. Uh, this is Nightmare 2. You can see the 2 there. Um, so in Nightmare, which is quite a good vertical scrolling shooter, we, we turn into suddenly a um, side view... Um, uh, Explore adventure type game, which is actually quite a good game. Circus Charlie, really, really good game on the MSX. Time Pilot, one of my favourite arcade games. 
um, of all time. Unfortunately, the this particular port for the MSX is isn't actually as good, uh, doesn't play as well as the Coleco port. It's a completely different port. All right, I'm going to pause for a second because my battery's running out. Right, plug the camera in. Next, we have Hyper Sports 3. Um, once again, the track and field and Hypersports games on the MSX were one of the things that really made it stand out at the time. They're very colourful, play very well. Uh, they are divided up into a lot of cartridges though. There's actually five cartridges. So you've got Track and Field 1 and 2, Hypersports 1, 2 and 3. I do have some box, so that's my loose Hypersports 3. Uh, Frogger, actually quite a rare cartridge uh, for the MSX uh, and quite different. Nothing like the Frogger version for the ColecoVision. Now, Athletic Land, um, which is also the same game as Cabbage Patch Kids on the Coleco, uh, but with different graphics. This is a special version. It's called I Love Athletic Land 2. So I assume there is something slightly different from it, the original Athletic Land. I've played it a bit, but it seems to be the same so far, but um, I probably need to play it some more. I have never seen another copy of that. Right, another MSX2 game. This is Fantasy Zone 2. Uh, there is Fantasy Zone 1, which is for the MSX1. This is for the MSX2. Um, amazingly, the scrolling's a little edgy. It's not too bad. The, the scrolling's a bit off-putting. They could have done it a little bit better. It, it's okay, just okay. Uh, MSX Soccer. Uh, which from Panasoft. I'm not sure how close that is to the Champion Soccer by Poncho. Probably should compare them at some size. Ah, now here we come to one of my um, other games that I really, really like. So this is Exurian 2 Zorni. It takes the Exurian gameplay and adds more elements to it, making it, um, you know, a that much more fun game. I've never seen, I don't know what the box looks like for this one, Has but this cartridge is in really good condition. Um, and it works and plays well. Then we have Mr. Do, quite a good version on the MSX. Um, um, I'm just trying to remember whether I, there's a possibility I've never done a gameplay of this one because of some lost footage. So it might be one worth playing again. Let's leave that out for a second. Uh, we've got another title here that I don't remember what it is Jet no it's Kanji text that I'm interpreting something so it's another game by Bandai Soft I'd have to try it out it used to do hiding back there in the gameplay next you can hide a lot of stuff in cassette draw so here's an example of that 4k data cartridge so it's got room here so you can write on it what you stored on it just like a cassette tape so 4k and it's quite heavy too So I believe this is Laptic 2, a strange platform game. And then we have some of the Casio titles we don't have boxes for. We've got Pachinko UFO. It's a Pachinko game. Um, uh, one of the earliest ninja games, so it's only title number 8, by Konami. Interesting. Um, I do know the name of this game. Anyway, it's actually a really good fun game. Which I know I can cheat. It is... Oh, Moppy Ranger, that one. <laughs> we'll explain later in the video how I can work that out. <clears throat> Uh, next, number 14 from Casio is Casio, it's golf, and that is actually quite a good golf game. So you can see this filling in some of the gaps from earlier. It's number 19. Um, Alibaba and the 40 Thieves. Something like that. Uh, this is, took me a while to find. This is a really good. Uh, it's a sequel to that other Ninja Kun game, I believe. Uh, this is actually quite a decent game to play. Then we get into some of the Namco titles. These are all very well done on the MSX. They're all worth playing. So we have Galaxian, 
and they're in the distinctive cartridge with the hole through it. So Galaxian. Rally X looks really good, plays like the arcade game. I just find it a bit easy. I, I can play it for ages. Um, Dig Dug, really good version of Dig Dug. So these are the same of those tapes we had earlier. And another game which I really wish I had a top label and a box is Bosconian. Bosconian on the MSX is one of the best home versions of Bosconian. Uh, then a couple more Sony titles. So these would have come in those large boxes you saw earlier. So you've got Battlecross and Crazy Train, which is actually a really good, fun um, puzzle game. That's all there. Right. Next, we need to go to this little section here. So, um, Hudson Soft released a B pack for the MSX. So this is all cartridge here. It has a slot in the top of it, and invented these things which are the precursor to hue cards for the um, for the that later on went on to use for the PC engine but these are called B cards there are only uh, nine of them I believe uh, one of them is a utility software I don't have that one but I have the rest of them so we have Bomberman which is a really good version Star Soldier Puyan Wonder Boy and he's hiding in here we have Jet Set Willy, and interesting enough, this version actually had you start with nine lives, it's been made a little easier. There it is, there, and it comes with another B card cartridge. My other complete one uh, is a golf game, and my other two, so these ones don't come with another B card reader. So we have oh, the golf game again, and Star Force, which is actually a really good version on the um, MSX. All right, we'll put those back. Oh, we've got to do stuff at this end so we can pull it out, I suppose. So next to those we have. Um, it's written in BASIC. I don't think we've ever actually tried it. It's um, like a, it's an adventure game. Uh, like a choose your own adventure sort of thing. Uh, F-15 Strike Eagle by Microprose. It's actually not half bad. Um, Champion Boxing by Sony. It's for MSX2 as well. So it has slightly more detailed characters. Um, I'm not that terribly into boxing and wrestling games, uh, but it's it's quite an interesting game as far as te you know, technical use of the machine. Okay, now we can go the other way. Don't want any accidents. Right, next. We have another game that I can't remember the name of, but it's a very cutesy uh, boy running away from foxes. Interesting use of colour palette too. It's an MSX original game. Uh, this is another cassette game, Volgard. Fairly primitive shooter type game, Transformer. Um, as you can see, cassette tape. Very unusual to have cassette tape games. And then we have Flappy Limited 85. That's what is what I meant when there were three different versions of Flappy. So that one was just Flappy Limited. This is Flappy Limited 85. I suppose that should be Flappy 2. There's another game hiding up here. Ah, this is by Squaresoft. It's called King Knight. So Square did release some titles. Square actually released Final Fantasy for the MSX as well. Don't have a copy of that. Last time I saw a copy of that go for auction, it went for a thousand dollars. A Mahjong came in quite a nice box though. Super Rambo for MSX2. Um, it's actually a. It's not. 
a true action game. It's it's actually more like actual Metal Gear Solid, where you run around, uh, you've got to find things, find your ammo. It's actually a really good game. Um, you do have to play it with a translation patch to get the most out of it. If you know what you're doing, you can play it without a translation patch, but this is actually worthwhile playing. Download the ROM and play it under emulation. Now, here's one of my titles I've had since from back in the day. It is the night, the three Nighthawk um, series of um, text and graphics adventures. It's got Loose Talk, Akina Magic, and Hordes of the Mountain King. They are actually quite well done on the MSX. The back pictures are obviously from the Atari ST and Mega, so a bit of a cheat there. But well worth playing. We have Tetris, and this is the MSX2 version. This is actually a really, really good version of Tetris, and this is an official Tetris. I do apologise for my stupid dog. Uh, now this is Macross. This is actually quite a good game. Foam packaging there, you've got to be careful of it. Um, graphics are a little simple, but it's actually quite good fun. Okay, randoms on the side. We have uh, Home Writer, another like word processing software. We have another Enix game, something to something wings. It is too. It's a, it's sort of a shooter. Which I just dropped on the floor. What do you mean? For the straight MSX, we have Acrojet. Uh, hole in one special uh, for MSX2. That's actually a very good golf game. Don't mind golf games. Um, this is a cassette based um, game that teaches you about golf technique. Um, a 3D maze game. So looking into the screen, sort of thing. Brother Tekaru ROM is another recordable ROM, I believe, like that Sony 4K flash cartridge. I have two titles from Philips. They come in the same cases as the Odyssey ones. I actually need a spare Odyssey case because I have two titles. I've got Zaxxon. So this is exactly the same as the Coleco version. There is a second version of Zaxxon for the MSX, which is the same as the SG-1000 version. And then we have Buck Rogers. So and I do have the tape, so I just need another one of those, um, um, you know, Odyssey or, or video pack cases to put this in. Uh, quite a good version of Buckrod, the same as the Coleco version. And we have Boulder Dash, great version on the MSX Minder, one of my original games from back in the day. Football of the Year, uh, Harvey Smith Show Dumper, Blagger. Once again, all. Oh, all spectrum conversions, but that doesn't make them not fun games, if you know what I mean. Um, another Mahjong game. This is my Mega Flash SCC Plus SD uh, card case. Um, so that allows me to use SD stuff in the MSX. Uh, Shop Boy, can't remember what that one is. Avenger, that's actually not a bad game for a spectrum port. We have a homebrew game, Gauntlet, for the MSX2. Um, what is it, tub man or male or something? Turmoil, god. Uh, Jetpack, which is another homebrew title for the MSX. Bit of a uh, explorey shooty type game. Now we've got some miscellaneous cart loose cartridges that won't fit in that other cartridge thing, but there's actually some quite good titles here. We have the MSX2 version of Bubble Bobble, actually quite a rare game, worth a fair bit of money and plays really well. Um, some, another one that's about a fox. Oh damn. Another one from Ascii Corp. Just with some kanji. Glider. Final Zone. Um, this Final Zone is available for several different systems. This one's very, very, a little bit primitive, very small characters. S um, 
bit, I suppose, a bit like Commando in a little way with a bit more strategy. Sort of playable. Um, this is Champion Wrestling, Championship Pro Wrestling, so that matches that uh, Champion Soccer. Another Poncho title. Poncho title. Um, something about Ping. Is that Penguin Land? I think that's Penguin Land, where you, uh, the game where you've got to try and work your way down. It's also on the thing. This is Tritorn 2. Um, much better than the first game, actually. Quite a good game. Um, how do we explain that? It's sort of like a platform action game. So very much like Valus with the um, with the sword and everything like that. Right, ready for the next shelf. This is a very special shelf, this is. So we've got some absolute MSX gold here. Well, we'll start with, here is the soundtrack for Spaceman, Bo. Um, sent to me by my good friend, uh, Tony Soft Otaku in Japan. Um, still absolutely can't believe he sent me this, and Spaceman Bo is one of my favorite shooter games on the MSX, and it has a wonderful soundtrack. So there are other MSX soundtracks. That's the only one I've got. Okay, the Laydock series. We have, interesting enough, um, the first game released is for the MSX2 and it's just called Laydock. It's very confusing. Uh, it's for floppy. It took me a while to find a copy of this. I think I got this in France. It's an okay vertical shooter. It gets a little boring and samey. Um, but it's okay. It's playable. Um, it took me ages to find a copy of that too. I have the first one that I found is called Super Laydock Mission Striker, and that's actually gone. They went back to the original MSX. Maybe they released that other game too early, and I don't know. But anyway, and for an MSX one game, this actually plays quite well. Uh, obviously, scrolling a little choppy and things like that, but a lot is going on on the screen, and it plays quite well. It even has a little bit of speech in it. Now, I don't have the full case, but I do have the internal disc. We have Laydock 2 Last Attack. This is my only MSX 2 Plus game. So it only works properly on an MSX 2 Plus. Um, and it scrolls both horizontally and vertically, it has speech in it. It is actually a really good game um, and plays quite well. Probably another one I should do an extended gameplay of. Once again, anybody who wants to see gameplays of stuff, note down the bottom. Now, next we have. Fantasy Zone, so this is for the MSX1, so of course um, choppy scrolling, not as good as use colour as MSX2. It still actually manages to look okay and doesn't play too bad for, and it's only a 16k ROM which is amazing. Um, I didn't even know Fantasy Zone and Fantasy Zone 2 came out for the MSX back in the day. Um, Look, I'm going to cheat here. So one of the most expensive games on my shelf is coming up. Uh, but here's the first one in the series. This is Metal Gear. I have the... it's the Japanese edition in the small case. Uh, this in itself is worth a fair bit of money. It is a great MSX2 game. This is where the Metal Gear series started on the MSX2. And it really, really is a good game. Perfectly playable, wonderful graphics, great gameplay and excellent game. But even better is Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear 2 Solid Stake Tactical Espionage Game, MSX2 and MSX2 Plus. Of my copies in really good condition. Um, an absolutely brilliant game. I actually had this game before I had the first one, and you know it plays even better than the first one. Has a lot more in it, and it's just such a great game. Can't uh, rave on. Any more, <laughs> you know, but it's just really, really good. So next to that we have King Kong 2. See, some of these covers are wonderful. Another um, game where you have to go around and find things and solve puzzles and everything like that. It is a really, really good game. Um, mostly playable without a translation patch. There's a couple little bits uh, where you can get stuck, but um, there is a translation patch available for this game because people like it so much. Next, absolute classic, we have um, Vampire Killer. 
so of course called Castlevania and other systems, but Vampire Killer. So this was released uh, one month. Um, so the first game in the series that released was was Castlevania on the NES disc system. Uh, this game was the second game released and was done by a different development team. So it has a lot more in it than the original Castlevania in any game on the NES. And actual Castlevania on cartridge was released for the NES a month after this one. But they are not the same games. They are different games. This is this harks more to the later games in the series. There's a lot more to do, a lot more RPG elements and upgrading. An absolutely brilliant game on the system. Uh, well worth playing. Obviously expensive. Not as expensive as some of the other titles, but well worth getting if you love MSX titles. Um, play it under emulation and give it a go. It's a really, really good version and has a lot it to the game. Next we have um, so the first game in the series is called Penguin Penguin Adventure. This is Penguin hang on. Yeah, Penguin Adventure. This is Penguin Land, I think it is, but it's the sequel and it actually adds the original has the original gameplay elements but adds more to it. Um, I didn't know anything about this game. Um, Back in the day, never saw a copy of it, um, and I, ha I actually haven't had this game very long. Um, and it's actually it is a very, very good game. It's, it's, the first game is really, really fun to play, but this one's even more fun to play. Next, we have uh, Hinotori Firebird uh, for the MSX2. It is um, it's a shooter, a, a bit. Um, a bit like Nightmare, um, but obviously using MSX2 graphics. Um, there are some RPG elements and the things you have to collect and upgrades and weapons and everything like that. Um, and is actually a really, really good game in its own right. Um, worthwhile playing. It is a little on the expensive side though. Worth copies are fairly rare. Um, now this is one of the pennant bas baseball games for the MSX. These are very well done. Very also very much sought after on the MSX. As you can see the you know the base the characters there are quite detailed and it is actually quite a good baseball game. Um, perfectly playable. And you you know you run a league. It's not just playing a game, you're you're supposed to run a league. And then there was a sequel. Interesting cover art. But it is basically a baseball game again very much sought after <coughs> and Nightmare actually had a third game called Shalom Nightmare 3 taking the RPG elements to the next level completely so it's basically using the characters from the Nightmare series that are developed through the previous two and doing a full-on RPG really has to be played with a translation patch to get the most out of it Now, um, I said we're sort of doing these shelves out of order, but we're missing the first title because it's on a different shelf. Um, this is Gradius 2, the second game in the Nemesis Gradius series. Very well done on the MSX. It introduced the SCC sound chip, which allows um, FM music in whatever computer it's plugged into. Um, and the graphics are fantastic. Yes, the scrolling is choppy, but you don't notice it because the gameplay is so good. It really, really is a great shooter. And unlike versions on other systems, it's the only one with all of the levels. And of course, there is a part two. which has even better graphics. It's the, I think it's the largest cartridge I have for the MSX, so it has the most amount of um, ROM in it. Lots and lots of stages. Lots, it has the SSC sound chip again. Really good game. Very hard, um, but it has some wonderful graphics pushing the MSX1 hardware a long, long way. And another game that is great on the MSX is Salamander. So once again for the base MSX but with an SSC sound chip, huge ROM, one of the only versions to have all of the stages. Um, 
it has the vertical scrolling sections as well and all the story and heaps and heaps of detail very very much worthwhile playing on MSX then we have the very first game in the Parodius series which started on the MSX by Konami with the SSE Township um, you can see it's a little bit more basic than some of the other versions the uh, the Famicom version probably plays a little better because it has some hardware scrolling abilities there but it's still quite a good fun game uh, probably a game I haven't played for a little while this version so it might be worth a gameplay soon but very very good version very happy to have a copy of it next one of my absolute favorite games for the MSX um, works on MSX2, but if you use it on MSX2 Plus, you get even um, faster horizontal scrolling because uh, MSX2 Plus has hardware horizontal scrolling. MSX2 does it by having lots and lots of video RAM and bank swapping. But Space Mambo really is that lost Konami shoot 'em up uh, that really could have been an arcade game in its own right, but you can only find this game on the MSX oh, unless you get it, play it on the virtual um, Nintendo's virtual. Uh, network, but it is a really, really good game. Um, huge game, beautiful music, wonderful gameplay. Uh, play it a lot. And then we have the LS games. Uh, so these are MSX2 games supporting the MSX Music uh, sound chip, which is also an FM uh, sound chip. The first LS is on cartridge. It is the same as uh, Power Strike on the uh, Sega Master System. They're almost identical. This runs um, probably a little faster and has slightly more uh, parts to the story mode and things like that. Uh, the Sega Master System and the MSX2 are very similar, uh, not the same graphics, but very similar graphics capabilities. Um, and the MSX2 has uh, far more video RAM and um, some slightly different display modes on top of the Sega Mars system but the um, the general tile modes are very similar um, the MSX2 does not have hardware horizontal scrolling but it has hardware vertical scrolling whereas the Mars system has hardware horizontal and vertical scrolling like the MSX2 Plus um, but otherwise they're very similar the games generally that are the same generally tend to run a little faster on the MSX depending on how good the programmers are and of course it supports MSX music you do get similar sound on a Sega Master System if you have the FM um, chip though. so that's a Lest 1 I love that game it's a great game but even better than that is a Lest 2 um, and this really really shows what you can do with MSX hardware it is a brilliant um, vertical scroll shoot them up lovely cover and everything like that as well but it's really really good this is sort of similar to Power Strike 2 on the Sega Mars system except Power Strike 2 has a different theme than this um, so they're not quite the same game but it's another good game in the LS series I do actually collect LS games because I like them so much um, but the graphics they just blow you away and the gameplay it's uh, can become a bit of a flickery mess if you're not used to it, but otherwise it is it just plays so well. Then we have another title here. This is actually one of my more expensive rare games. So it's Xanak, but it's Xanak EX, which is the enhanced version of Xanak. There's a Xanak version for the MSX1 as well. Uh, not worth as much as this version. This one plays very well, pretty much identical to the NES version, just a little bit more colourful. Um, the MSX is able to display a lot more colour than the, uh, especially the MSX2, than the NES, but you know, smooth vertical scrolling, really fast, hard gameplay, not an easy game to track down, um, and obviously I don't have a copy of the MSX1 version yet. Um, there is like a tape release version of it. I'm not sure about that one. That, that is being sold occasionally. I've occasionally seen a loose cartridge of the first one pop up. But not for anything I can afford. Alright, let's go out to our next shelf. Right, our next shelf is more Konami goodness. Uh, with a little bit of Nemco goodness on the front. So these are my Nemco titles that are fully boxed. Or, uh, plus Pac-Man. I've run out of room in the drawer down below. So Pac-Man, very good version of Pac-Man. 
Uh, then we have King and Balloon. Plays quite well. I haven't had that one as long. Mappy. Really good version of Mappy. Galaga. Once again plays well. They're obviously the characters aren't very colourful, but it's it's they really nail the Namco games really nail the gameplay. And Tank Battalion. I think this means that I have I, I believe I've got all bar one uh, Namco title for the MSX. Okay, so starting from the left, we have Athletic Land. So this is the normal Athletic Land. But it's actually it's a cutesy um, platform game with sort of almost pitfall elements where you run from one side, you get from go trying to go from the left hand side of the screen to the right side of the screen, you've got to get through ten scenes per level and then you go up a level. And it's actually quite a good fun game with quite good music. Then we have Comic Bakery where you've got to keep the bakery running and stop uh, all, all the animals trying to break things down and uh, get the orders to the trucks. Quite a complex game, it's really good fun. Once again, Konami game written very well. This is the international version. Same as that Athletic Land was the international version. Next we have one of my favourite, another one of my favourite MSX games, The Goonies. This brings back a lot of memories from back in the day. Never owned a copy back in the day, but played it heaps in the store. This is how I showed what the MSX computer could do to a customer coming into the store. It's just got so many active elements and the music is brilliant. Uh, every time I've done a gameplay of this it's been copyright striked in the past. Maybe since Konami's died down might be able to do another one. But I really, really enjoy this game. It's just got so much to it you can play it again and again. Right, Hyper Rally. Uh, there aren't actually that many car games where you are racing you know, um, into the screen, outrun type like style, and it doesn't do a too bad job for MSX1 hardware. Right, we have Hypersports 2, so this means I'm missing Hypersports 1. So this is the second game in the series. We have skit shooting, archery, and weightlifting, so only three games in this one. But not too, the skit shooting's fun, and so is actually the archery. I do archery in real life, so. Then we have another fantastic game that I used to love back in the day. Uh, didn't get to play it very much because every time we got it in we sold it very quickly. Uh, King's Valley. Um, <clears throat> you have multiple levels. They're not all single screen. Um, later on levels are across multiple screens where you've got to basically collect all the things to get the key to open the door. Um, <clears throat> fantastic game and there is actually a sequel. Another one of my favourites back in the day, a vertical scrolling shooter with lots and lots of character, power-ups um, and things that started a whole series. So first one's a shooter, the rest of them uh, slowly turned into an RPG, but uh, a really, really brilliant game. And then of course we have Nemesis, so the very first game in the Gradius series, um, still very much fun to play in its own right, lots and lots of levels. Um, has all of the levels compared to other versions of it. Sky Jaguar, a vertical scrolling shooter, um, chunky scrolling, um, but quite shows what the MSX can do as far as sprite shapes and things. A bit simpler than like those less games and things like that, but a very good fun game nonetheless, fairly easily. Um, <clears throat> you can see that I copied some of the style of the ship in my Pixidisc game. Right, Track and Field 1, um, or Hyper Olympic 1, it's also known as. Uh, this is the international release version. So you have 100 meter dash, the long jump, the hammer throw, and the 400 meter dash. Really, really good versions. And then you have to switch to another cartridge to do the rest of the title, so Hyper Olympic 2. Uh, these titles aren't in, obviously in super duper condition, but we have 110 meter hurdles, javelin throw, high jump, and 1500 meter run. You try and do in the 1500 meter run on a computer tapping a key. It's hard. Next we have Yi Ah Kung Fu. <coughs> now I do believe I have this. I have ended up with two copies of Yi Ah Kung Fu 2. One's the international version. One's the Japanese version. At some stage I thought one was the first game and one's the second game. So. 
I need to swap one of those with somebody for the first game at some stage. Then we have um, a completely different Konami release, different region or something or later, different boxing of Super Cobra. There is a version of Super Cobra in this type packaging as well. These ones have cropped up. Super Cobra on the MSX is actually quite a good version. Um, uh, no version of Scramble like a lot of systems. Just about every system got Super Cobra but nobody got Scramble. Let's move those out of the way. Some, these are some of the smaller box games. Uh, this is actually a really good fun game. F1 Spirit, the way to Formula 1. I love Formula 1 games. Uh, it's not into the screen. It's from above, like Road Fighter. Um, but it plays really well. It's got a 8-voice polyphonic LSI custom sound chip is mounted in the cartridge. Uh, it's, a, it's a really good game. and There is a lot to it, and, but it's only for the MSX1 and it still plays um, so well. Right, we have the Game Master, which is the English version of that mul uh, that um, game enhancement cartridge I showed you earlier. <coughs> so it allows you to... Um, what have we got here? This is actually got English in it. So pause, advance scenes, so you can jump levels, slow down the action to study the game, select the number of players, select and set your level and stage of play, save your all-time high score. So you plug it in along with another Konami title and it enhances the gameplay. Um, and this is the Japanese one I've got does the, the similar functionality. Uh, then we have one of the most atrocious Konami games. Uh, for some reason Konami got, um, I believe it was Ocean, to do the Green Beret port for the MSX rather than do it themselves. And it is an atrocious <coughs> port of the game. It is virtually impossible to play. I believe a lot of the Green Beret ports were terrible anyway. Extremely, extremely disappointing game. Um, should have been able to be much better. And it would have been so much better if Konami did it themselves. Rather than this half-assed uh, Spectrum, partial Spectrum port. Then we have Kings Valley 2 MSX version. There's actually a Kings Valley 2 MSX2 version, which I've never played. Really nice box. So it's like Kings Valley. Um, the graphics are a little bit more enhanced. A um, lot of uh, things. And it's got that LS, the LSI 8 voice polyphonic sound chip in it once again. And this, the music in Kings Valley is fantastic. This makes it even better. All right, let's play a bit of sport. We've got Konami Boxing. Once again, not really into boxing and wrestling games. Konami Golf. Used to play this one back in the day. It's actually quite a good, fun, fairly simple golf game. Uh, ping Pong, Japanese version. A little bit of fade there. Actually, quite a good, fun game. The computer plays a mean game. Konami Soccer. Not too bad. I believe that other soccer game I have is better than that one. And Konami's Tennis. Doesn't play a too bad game either. So that's my wonderful Konami shelf, part two. <laughs> Konami really, really supported the MSX well. It was their primary system for development back in the day. All right, let's go for our next shelf. All right. Back again. So on the shelf we have a few homebrew titles sitting at the front here. Uh, Deep Dungeon Adventure, which is actually a really good dungeon crawler. Um, we've uh, procedurally generated dungeons. It's actually really good fun. Really well done. Highly recommended. Very cheap. Still available. Uh, Jungle Hunt, a back port of the Coleco version to MSX. Uh, and it's not a bad version. A back port of Montezuma's Revenge. A good game in its own right. So this is the basically the Coleco version converted back to the MSX, and they redid the music because different graphic, different sound chips. Now hiding back here, we have another Sony game called Cubit, um, which is a 3D type checkers game. <clears throat> An absolutely brilliant game on the MSX, and very evenly ported across systems. But I really do love the MSX. Uh, one I would really like, this is the, one of the ones I'm missing on cartridge, I would really love the cartridge version of this because that would make it easy for me to plug it in and play it. Um, but it really does play quite well on the MSX and I love Bean Rider. 
Then we have River Raid. Once again, the MSX version is really good. Now, another one I've never seen a cartridge version of this one. Uh, Hero on the MSX plays really, really well. Pretty much the same as the Coleco version. Uh, both very, very playable. Don't actually have Hero on the Coleco. Decathlon. Uh, there are copies of this one around in cartridges. It's just more money than I want to pay just for Decathlon because I probably wouldn't play it. All 10 games. Um, plays quite well. Um, Decathlon's good. Uh, not the same sort of comical graphics as the um, Hyperspots of Track and Field. Uh, Ghostbusters. The Japan release actually came out on tape as well, so there is no Japan cartridge release of Ghostbusters. Now these are the smaller release Sony titles. These are the ones that I remember from back in the day, although some of the not, we didn't get all the titles, but these were the boxes I saw. So we have Traffic. Um, this was a complete surprise when I found this. I hadn't seen this title before. So you've got to control traffic flow in a city. It's actually not a too bad uh, game when you get into it. Star Blazer did have this one back in the day. I thought this was a very, very basic game. Um, it takes a little while to figure out what in the hell you've got to do and you sit in to keep on going. You've got to bomb this one thing um, when you get up to it. And if you don't, then you go around and round and round and you wonder what in the hell's going on. So a bit of a simple game, not worth paying a lot of money for. Raid on Bungling Bay. This game I played heaps back in the day. Uh, never owned a cartridge myself until I got this this copy, but I had a a hacked disc version that I played. Really good strategy game, scrolling around, bombing all the targets and everything like that. Really good fun game, um, well worth playing. Uh, payload, didn't see this one back in the day. So you've got to drive your truck around between cities. Um, it's actually, the graphics are very well done. Quite an interesting game. Uh, the obligatory Mahjong title. And then we have three wonderful Load Runner titles. You've got Load Runner, Load Runner 2, which is another 100 levels, and then you've got Championship Load Runners, which is when they got everybody to send in their insane levels and they put them on a cartridge. There is one more version that I don't have, which is actually the version I, I had back in the day. There was a disc version of Load Runner, which contains all the levels from 1 and 2 and a level editor. Uh, just before we go, so I move out of the way. Midnight Brothers, um, a bit of a um, a 3D maze game of all things. Uh, things. Gal Force Defense of Chaos is actually a shooter. Right. Next. Sorry for the slight interruption. Okay, we have Cosmic Explorer. Now this game, I used to play the absolute bejesus out of. I, it, we got it after. Um, Raid on Bungling Bay. <clears throat> I take it it's made by a similar developer. So it's a space exploration and um, combat game. We have to go around and um, secure bases and you know blow them up and defeat the uh, the aliens. And it's actually quite a brilliant game. I haven't had this copy for very long. Um, I can't. This is a Japanese copy, obviously. Um, I can't remember how to play it properly though. <laughs> um, I need to have another go at it and make a proper video. But um, it's a really, really fun game. Only a 16k ROM, but it's just one of those fun games. Once again, chunky scrolling, but quite colourful graphics, and it was just the absolute bee's knees back in the day. Uh, another game I used to love playing back in the day was Choplifter, and the version on MSX is quite good. Pretty much the same as Choplifter on uh, the Coleco. Um, once again, fairly decent copy. Uh, did, didn't know about this one back in the day. This one's Coaster Race. This is trying to do an awful lot on the MSX hardware. So it's an into the screen racer, but you also like stunt racer. You go up and around loops. Um, very advanced graphics. I would have been blown away by this back in the day. Um, uh, very low frame rate uh, nowadays. And next is Alpha Squadron. Um, <clears throat> quite an interesting concept. You've got to take your ship off from the runway, go up, fight some ships, and then you've got to land. And the landing is almost 
nigh impossible which sort of ruins the game a little bit so trying to do a little bit too much right so then we've got oh um this is a special connector for the back of the Spectre Video um, 728 and also some other MSX's that have uh, an expansion port rather than a cartridge port. It turns an expansion port into a cartridge port. So it's like a, um, a pin connector thing. Right, some large cassette titles. We've got Peter Beardley's International Football. Batman. Uh, that's my original copy from back in the day. Does that one actually no screenshots on that one? Batman's actually a really good uh, 3D isometric uh, game. Spectrum conversion, of course. International Karate. Um, not too bad on the MSX, and not just a not just a uh, spectacle. Uh, Addictable. Um, a specky port from memory, but not too bad. Right, this is one of my tapes from back in the day and this was my how I played Alienate so it's got Gunfight Alien, Nightshade and Night Law so unbelievable ultimate awesome collection of games another one of ones from back in the day this is Gauntlet so this is the original Gauntlet for MSX1 it doesn't do a too bad job um, I recently did a video on Gauntlet that's been made for the MSX2 using its increased abilities uh, Trailblazer, uh, a port from Gremlin, but it doesn't look too bad. Uh, Trantor, a bit of a Aliens vibe and stuff like that with that one. Sorry, I've got to watch the reflection. Right, moving up to the next shelf. Now this shelf has a lot of um, homebrew titles on it. Uh, we start with this one, Con Konami Box. So this is a recreation of an actual Konami product from back in the day <clears throat> that had a whole lot of Konami titles, but they're on disc. So these are all on this cartridge. I think this has more than the original. So these are all MSX1 titles, and none of these need an SSC sound chip because there's none in the cartridge. But there's some really, really good uh, titles on there. You can see a couple that I'm missing. I don't have Magical Tree. Obviously, I'm missing Hypersports 1. Um... Cabbage Patch Kids is a cross port. I don't think it ever came out for MSX. Uh, let's turn a look. I've got all, everything on the left hand side besides the ones I mentioned. Uh, and I'm missing Ya Kung Fu. Um, might be missing Pipoles, wasn't I? No. Yeah, so, oh, and I don't have Twin B. There you go. Um, so, very, very good thing. Fills in a couple of hurts. Now, the next one is a very recent homebrew. Life on Earth, actually the sequel to Life on Mars, which I don't have. Uh, this one uh, uses the V990, sorry about the reflection, V990 graphics card uh, in at least an MSX2 uh, with a bit of RAM and a um, and either MSX Music or another FM sound card, and it really is amazing what this graphics card can do and uh, the extent of this game. I have a second game that also by the same guys that uses these enhanced abilities and that's very much like um, a Golden Axe and it, or Dungeons and Dragons uh, and it's a really really good game uh, but to play it you need one of these. Um, now they are actually, this is Revision 2 uh, the Revision 3s have already gone out and sold out, but they are going to make more of them. Uh, the new ones are slightly smaller and only have one connector, which you can then get these other outputs via an adapter. Cut down the cost. Um, <clears throat> it basically adds an extrapolation of the last um, graphics, car uh, graphics chip that was made for the MSX, which is the Turbo R, so it's an evolution of even that, and gives it pr about, probably about Amiga 4000 uh, level graphics. Uh, right, got those out of the way now. Uh, this is a uh, music module that my friend Mark Vigier over in the Netherlands sent me. Um, it allows you to play music and uh, FM music. So it's got an FM music card and software. Uh, very similar to the stuff that came with the um, Yamaha. Not quite the same though. Uh, right, we have 
gyrus, which never came out for the MSX, only came out for the ColecoVision. So it's using that code, but enhancing it. Um, they, they're they still using the original sound, so they, they've actually got the sound chip from um, the um, Coleco in the cartridge. Um, but they've enhanced the graphics a little bit, coloured it a little bit more. So the version of Gyros and the Coleco is very good, but this one just makes it that little bit better, and it runs faster as well. Uh, next one is the first game, um, Kai Magazine. Oh, this is my bit vision. And anyway, the first game I got that it needs the V9990 uh, chipset, Codam Intruder. It's a um, vertically sh scrolling shooter. It's it's not bad. It's a good demonstration of the graphics. It probably doesn't use it as as much as some of the other those other titles. All right, Booming Boy. I'll bring these down here. Might be able to see them a little better. Uh, really good cover art, and it's basically Bomberman, um, but um, done for the MSX2, so it actually, once again, is very, very good. And next title is Bomb Jack. This is pretty much an arcade perfect port of Bomb Jack and for MSX2. I've actually recorded a video on this, or we'll probably um, <clears throat> some gameplay of this. I'll probably release it after this one. Uh, the Cure. Um, pretty much a Castlevania for MSX1 is the best way to describe it. And it actually plays really, really well. They do a good job with these homebrews. Uh, Jawbreaker 2. Quite a good, fun um, Pac-Man-like game, and the graphics on it are really good for normal MSX. Uh, then we have another backport. So this is taking the code from the Coleco, uh, backporting it to the MSX. Once again, uses the sound from the Coleco by having the embedded graphics chip, um, and uh, it looks really good. So. It, uh, it looks and plays really good, so it's a really good version. And then we have Pang for MSX1. Um, graphics are a little simplistic and thing, but it actually plays quite well. And this is an older. Uh, reverse port homebrew collection. So Tutankhamun is another one game that did not come out for uh, the uh, MSX, uh, which is a real pity. It's one of my favourite games on the ColecoVision. So this is Muffy, is the guy. So this is the guy that um, worked on a lot of the cross-platform code that a lot of the other guys now use. Um, so it has Tutankhamun, Pepper 2, Montezuma's Re Revenge, which is probably the same as this single release here, and Jungle Hunt, same as that one. Uh, Mikey's, which comes across from the SG-1000, um, and this really cool game called The Three Dragon Story. Now, I do not have that for the SG-1000, so it's the only, um, this is the only format I've got that game in, so I was really, really chuffed getting this cartridge. Uh, they were limited in number. Uh, so actually, uh, they've got it in a a gold shell and stuff like that. Uh, and this doesn't have the Coleco sound chip in it, so they actually converted the sound as well. Then we have Iridium. Um, this is a port... Um, Nanoch... is it Nanochess that did this? I think it was Nanochess, I could be... sorry if I'm saying the wrong one. Um, and it has smooth horizontal scrolling, just like the real Iridium on the um, uh, Commodore 64. It's a very impressive technical feat on the standard MSX. Um, due to Toshiba, MSX is having a clone chip. It runs slightly slower on those, uh, but it's still quite playable. Uh, it doesn't have the... <coughs> doesn't have the uh, a couple of the intermediate things, but it plays pretty damn close to the Commodore 64 version, and it's just an amazing uh, technical feat on the system. He has been trying to port it 
across to the ColecoVision with the Super Game module, but I don't believe he's quite got it fully working yet. And we have another fairly recent um, homebrew turtle, Zombie Incident. Another explorer and platform that really uses the MSX1 hardware really well, gives you a colourful game um, and uh, you know plays really well. Uh, next is a title from Oscar Toledo in um, is it South America. Um, and so this is the original version of Mecha 8. Mecha 8 came out for the Coleco as well. And it is a vertically scrolling shootout with a mech. And it plays really well. And it's amazing how many enemies and bullets and everything is going on on the screen with um, very little flicker. So this is the original, original one. As you can see, it's in slightly different packaging than some others. <clears throat> Moving along, we have Stranded by none other than yours truly. So that's my the last text adventure that I did. This is my... Um, so you can see my logo and everything on there. So that's my biggest text adventure. Uh, this is just me fooling around with repackaging of my program pack one. I'm not actually totally happy with this colour. I'll probably go more with this blue. It looks nicer. So I was thinking of re-releasing my program packs and something like that. I have actually got cassette tapes to manufacture them and stuff like that. Um, my tape duplicator is built, has broken at the moment though, which is a pity. Then you have a collection I released of all of my basic early titles on disc for the um, MSX. So there's lots and lots of games on there. Alright, next we have my only boxed Activision Japanese release, which is Keystone Capers. Pretty much the same as the Coleco version. Um, doesn't quite have the same feel as the Atari 2600 game, but it still plays quite well. It has a couple of differences. Uh, Egerland 2, so sequel to Egerland. Um, really, really good game. The Egerland series is very entertaining, very colourful, very well made. Um, HAL Laboratory, and this one includes an editor as well, so you can edit your own levels. Those up there, and we've got the plastic sticking together. Right, American truck, which is different from payload. So I thought that might be the same game. It's similar, but it's not quite the same. But you've got to get your payload from one city to another. Uh, okay, for those. So dam busters. Uh, not very advanced graphics, but an interesting game play. Follows the same storyline as the other uh, Dam Busters games. Um, from Sydney Data Products. Interesting. Get those two things out of the way. Very really careful those cassettes. Right, we have TZR Grand Prix Rider uh, for normal MSX. Once again, probably trying to do a bit too much uh, with MSX1 hardware. Um, Sega's out. Um, hang on, it does bikes better than this particular game. Let's come back so we don't have an accident. So Arcus is a, another um, graphical adventure, and it's for MSX2. Probably never be able to play it. We have a couple of loose items here. Hal Laboratory. I'm not giving away what it is. I'm not sure what that game is. Probably one of these ones in the tapes here. So these are just a um, uh, tape fantasy role playing game. I think these came in a lot. Uh, DB Soft MSX application series. Mystery House 2. Soft application series and more again, and an actual blank cartridge, which I'm not sure which one it is. Obviously, I haven't looked through the shelf for a little while. Oops, almost did it make sense. Right, okay, so up here, a couple more large format cassette titles. So we have Football Manager. Uh, 
Pepsi Mad Mix Challenge. Uh, Tetris from Mirasoft for MSX1. The MSX2 official version is much better. Five Star, which has Elidon, Manic Miner, Barnstormer, Shark Hunter, and Zoids. There's actually some quite good games on there, and I don't have either Barnstormer or Shark Hunter or Elidon or Zoids separately. So there you go. Have Manic Miner. Off Wizards and Monty, excellent game. Uh, that's another one of one one ones from back in the day. Used to play that quite a lot. I think the five stars from back of the day as well. The rest are additions. Okay, so we have some more homebrews <clears throat> up here. We have uh, Who Dares Wins, which I did a gameplay of recently. Um, this is there was Who Dares Wins on tape for MSX One. This is a remake for MSX Two, and it's really really good. Plays really well. Also uses both buttons. Then you have an Alienate remake for MSX2. Um, this is the first of these um, uh, Ultimate remakes, uh, so it's probably the most primitive of them, but it still plays quite well. Then you have Head Over Heels remake for the MSX2. As you can see, it's multicolored. Um, I think they actually took the uh, Amstrad. Um, I can't remember the model number. The Amstrad CPC, the, mod, the word processor one, the one that has the higher resolution and has shades of grey version, and then they've colourised it and added things to it. But it's a, a great version of Head Over Heels. Uh, Tina's Adventure Island, pretty much a Wonder Boy remake by Imanok, who's an, an absolute gun at MSX programming. Original MSX, it's very colourful. Uh, works extremely well and plays like a fantastic enhanced version of Wonder Boy. And Oscar, not to outdo himself, brought out Mecha 9, the sequel to Mecha 8. Uh, even more colourful graphics, more intro scenes and intermission scenes, bigger bosses. Um, it um, will work on any MSX and if you put it on an MSX2, it actually shows enhancements. So he's great at doing that sort of stuff. So another homebrew title, um, Batman. So this is a remake of Batman with um, colorization and everything. It's a really, really good version. Um, includes support for the Z80B and the R and in the Turbo R computers as well. So it can truly go at a faster speed, but on a normal MSX, it plays. MSX2. It plays fine, right, colourful, really playable and really enjoyable game. Actually has the original game embedded there in it as well. So I think I've got, what, three copies of the original game as we've gone through here. Another tape title, Rambo 3. It's a specky port. Um, doesn't make it a bad game. It's not too bad. It's into, you know, a bit of a mix of play styles. Uh, Ghost, a fairly recent uh, homebrew. Um, another multi-screen explorer uh, type of game, really, really amazing. You can't believe this is on an MSX one when you're playing it. Another, also another fairly recent one, Draconic Throne. Oh, no screenshots. Uh, you actually play as the dragon and attack villages and things like that. It's good fun. Hard though. Um, X Spelunka. This is an absolutely phenomenal game. So it takes the original Spelunker game and takes it to an extreme level. That's why I suppose it's called X Spelunker. Uh, really, really good game for MSX1. Um, if you've got an MSX, get yourself a copy of that one. When you like platform, you like games like Kings Valley and all those sort of ones. Put those back. And we're still going. We're going to go over here. Right. Now we have even more titles. Sorry, we're a bit stuck here. Right, I was actually really surprised when I found a copy of this. This is Rastan Saga for MSX2. Big ROM. Um, this plays really, really well. It's actually a very good version of Rastan. And um, uh, I was actually, you know, I wasn't sure what the game was going to be like. Um, when I found a copy, um, paid about a hundred dollars for it, I think, which I think is quite reasonable. And um, 
it plays really really well and I actually quite enjoy it. Probably another one I should do a separate video just on it. Then we have Xevious. This without a doubt shows what having an MSX2 computer is all about. Um, it really is a really good version. The only other version around that's anything like it is um, Xevious for the PC Engine or you have to go up to the PlayStation 1 Xevious game as well to get the actual same game that's in this and this is comparable to the PC Engine version to show you how good it is and it plays really well, you've got two different modes, the original game and then you've got the, uh, the other time of the game where you have different ships and power-ups and things like that it just makes Xevious lots of fun and what would we be without another baseball game? This is from Namcot for MSX2 and MSX2 Plus. Quite an advanced baseball game. Um, probably haven't played it as much as some of the others. Next, really pleased I found a copy of this in such good condition. This is R-Type by IRM for MSX and MSX2. So it supports MSX music. It actually um, looks pretty good. Um, it does have the, the chunky scrolling um, and it plays quite well. Um, it is very hard though which I think um, turns some people off it but I actually really enjoy it. I think it's a very good version of our type. Next we have another game that you can get two versions of. You can get an MSX version which is absolutely atrocious and then you've got the MSX2 version, which is this one, of 1942. Um, and it is a pretty decent, accurate version of the arcade game 1942. I suppose that's the only disadvantage it's of the arcade game 1942, which is not the most interesting of the series. Then we have a curious title. It may seem familiar for the Mega Drive um, um, Genesis people out there because there is a Darwin game for that. that that Darwin game is actually the sequel to this one this is the first game in the series so this is Darwin 4078 um, this is the only uh, boxed version of the game I have seen um, I actually had a loose version before I just ran across this boxed version it's a very good shooter um, uses an interesting color palette uh, it can it's not as exciting as other vertical scrolling shooters I've played, so it's more a curiosity for me because I like shooters. Uh, then we've got another F-16 Real Dog Fighter Simulator game. Doesn't have too bad graphics. And then we've got V-Style Fighter from ASCII Corporation for MSX and MSX2, a disc game. I do believe there's almost two different versions of the game on there, depending on what system you have. Um, then we have uh, basically Go. Um, I wasn't sure whether that's a R or a thing, but anyway, neither special. It's another platform exploratory type game. It's very much like, it's a bit like Castle Excellent in a lot of ways. It's not a bad game. It's a fairly recent find as well. Let's move some loose stuff. Last shelf. Right, we have Super Jet Fighter. There are a lot of these uh, things. It's a pure f um, war simulation game, so not a flight simulator. So, fairly unplayable. Then we have Topple Zip. This is the special edition. Um, I did have a normal edition just in a loose cartridge. So it comes in a metal tin and everything like that. It's a very good scrolling shooter that has, you have to be careful, the, the background is different levels so you can actually run into it um, and stuff like that. It's probably trying to do a bit too much on MSX1 um, so it, unless you're really really into it, it can be a bit hard to play. Um, another title from Toshiba. Um, some strange uh, dodgy type game, I can't remember. I haven't actually played that for a long time. When we have one from TESoft, 
something mummy. Is it? Oh, is this almost a version of Oh Mummy? Another game where you've got to wander around a maze, avoiding stuff and collecting stuff. Next, we have a copy of Elite uh, tape version. I had the um, disc version back in the day. I do not know what I did with my original copy. I still have my original pirate copy, so obviously I, I sold it to somebody at some stage. But this is a tape copy that um, a gentleman in Finland kindly sent me. Um, it's got this little sticker over here because the original games actually had stickers over them. Um, underneath here it says Amstrad, but it is actually the MSX copy inside, and that's exactly what the, word, the original boxes were in, but the stickers have peeled off. And they were approximately this colour. My printer wasn't very well when I tried to do that. Right, Panor Amusement cartridge has multiple... Um, multiple... I think it's multiple games in it, and it's another cartridge that will enhance other cartridges as well. Can't do that one. I did anyway. And then our last three games are the three Yeez games that also came out for the MSX. So we have, and these are beautiful inside. So we have Wanderers Yeez, Wanderers from Yeez. Beautiful graphics. MSX2 and MSX2 Plus. And then we have Yeez 2, so Ancient Yeez Vanished. And they've got full colour books and everything in there. And Ancient Years Vanished, the final chapter. No way of tongue, because there's a lot in there. So, this is a big... I know this is a long video. <coughs> but, uh, you know, MSX is one of my passions. And uh, this is where my collection is standing at the moment. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Um, it's one I've been planning to do for a while. Um, but my room's been at a bit of a mess for a while too, so... <clears throat> and I haven't actually had that many new MSX titles, maybe a couple of homebrews uh, for a little while anyway. They are hard to get, they are expensive, so it is a little uh, difficult to keep going with the collection. But anyway, here it is. Uh, it is one of the parts of the collection. If I ever downsized, I would never sell one uh, title from my MSX. It's my original passion, so... Alright, I'm Electric Adventures. Thanks to all my subscribers, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.